Um, let's get into straight into the game, shall we, boys? Manly defeat the Eels, 34 to 30. This was an interesting one because for most of the game, you would have said Manly had it pretty much in control, looked like world beaters, and then the last 10 minutes or so, you thought, oh, my God, this is going to be the Cowboys from last year, the Cowboys Manly versus last year. But the Manly Seagulls managed to uh, hold on. i got to say, some of the touches Schuster had, Schuster had, like we spoke about his potential at the start of the year and, you know, what he can bring and how different he is. But if you ever need an example of the unique direction that Schuster can take this club in at six, the weekend was that. Like some of the touches he had were so silky. Now, his game's not complete by any stretch of the imagination. He needs some more game match fitness, you know, defensively sometimes read. But... I just thought Schuster's impact on the game, along with Ola Kawatu, who is getting closer and closer to an origin start this year, he was phenomenal. Uh, I thought Schuster and Ola Kawatu for me were absolutely outstanding. Guru, what do you think about this game? That moment where Josh Schuster chipped over the top of Guffo. Insane. Like the touch that he had, it looked like it was a helium football. It was just, it was perfect. And, you know, I think it's all good and well when you chip over the top. The vast majority of times you get it off the play, the way you get to assess what's going on. That was off an offload. Mm-hmm. That was just off the top of his head. And Turbo obviously scored it, but him or Schuster <coughs> could have scored that yep. one. So uh, unreal stuff. And yeah, obviously defensively there's work to be done there with Schuster, but it's early days. Um, he's a special, special talent, isn't he? As long as he could just, if he keeps a good attitude and training hard, he can be whatever he wants to be. Seriously crazy. Timmy, what do you think about the game? Yeah, I mean, it was just Schuster being the... It was just the centre of attention for that game. Some of his moments and ability to square up in attack, you look at what we often refer to, to halves running direct and, and squaring up the defensive line, and arguably the best in the game at it is Kieran Foran, who left that spot at Manly on the left edge, and Schuster comes in and, dare I say it, like, in terms of squaring up defences, he could be better. In his first game at 5'8", coming off injury was freakish. Joey mm. Johnson was in commentary at the time, and I've never seen a bloke get more excited about a, a half squaring up the defensive line. He was about to lose his mind. Mm. Ten minutes in. Yeah. And I think the stats aren't going to reflect it at times. I think what we're going to see with Josh Schuster, it wouldn't surprise me if he stays fit this season to be the top try contributions mm. this year, much like Matty Moylan was last year and took us all surprise. Because he does all the hard yards, squaring up in the middle and playing out the back, he plays out the back to Tommy and Tommy sweeps and he'll get the try assist. But Schuster is going to just rack up a ton of try contributions. And mm. as you said, Kempi, there's, there's a few fitness issues. Defensively, he wasn't very good at times, but I think that'll come. He'll learn being that one further out in the defensive line. Uh, really good signs. Like first game back, to have that much of an impact against the grand finalists. Mm. Like we're forgetting, this guy's like 20 years old. Like... It, it was an incredible performance. Like, if he had come in and just did his job, we would have been like, great return, good solid for the young fella. He's been out for a while. He didn't just come in and do his job. He came in and did some things that a lot of halves that have been in the comp for 10 years can't do. It's insane. And I would go as far to say as he is, not only is he, like, good at squaring up, and I think you probably agree to me, he's the best in the comp at squaring up. Right now, small sample size, absolutely no denying it. But the way he can throw a ball out the back, but his whole body is looking directly forward, I think he's the best in the comp at squaring up. Now, he's not. doesn't mean he's the best half, to all that, blah, blah, blah. But at squaring up, I don't think we've... I'm trying to think of a guy we've ever seen that can do stuff like that. And you really... I, I'm struggling to remember a guy, unless you guys know someone that was as good. You obviously mentioned Foles, and especially in the early parts of his career, he was incredible at it. He still is. But, yeah, Schuster, the way that he does it, like you can see how he... Like, he obviously squares up his man, but he squares up the next two guys. It's crazy. Well. He, and he doesn't insane. look. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. even need to look to pass it. Yeah. Like, all jokes aside about the fact that he's actually blind, he doesn't even have to look. That's how silky he is. And he lands it nearly every time. It's yeah. it's mental. And with those, like, no-look passes, like, it obviously it has so much impact, but it's also crazy that it's his first game at 5'8", he's only been in the club, what, two years? Mm. First grade. Like, it's not like he's playing with guys he's been playing with for 10-odd <laughs> yeah. years or anything. Like, it's just... It's crazy what he's able to do. And I personally think that Cooper John's coming in and killing it in the preseason in the first two games, I think it's the best thing for Schuster. Yeah, put a rocket up in. Yeah. Mm. But, like, the, the, his biggest challenge will be staying fit. Because, mm. like, it's not talent. It's, you know, he, the crazy thing with Schuster is, like, usually when you get halves in, there's always this one glaring 
not issue, but glaring part of their game that they're going to have to fight for their whole career. And it's usually size, defence, um, taking it to the line, courage, you know, all of those kind of things. Schuster doesn't have anything to worry about size. Defensive reads, like, he can sort that out. If he sorts his defensive reads out, his game is completely, it's already completely rounded. It's like maybe a long kicking game that he might need to work on. But it's just the amount of weapons this kid's going to have in five years' time if he can stay on the field. Look, look how naturally he looks now. Imagine in five years on the field. Like, it'll be incredible. And, and, and the, the bloke that he was squaring up a lot of the time, Mitchie Moses, he could take a note from him, you like, because, you know, Mitchie, who loves crabbing across field and bringing blokes under, and that's all fine, but at times, you know, we, we've obviously been critical of him saying he doesn't square up enough mm. to have it happen on him in mm. front of him from a rookie. So, like, he could take, take a bit of note from that. Yeah, for sure. And that's, like, one knock on Mitchell Moses' game is, like, because I think he, I think Mitchell Moses is 100% sorted his D, but sometimes when they start chasing points, he'll just start getting too lateral. Um, I think it, you know what I think it is. I think it's more rather than being, you know, a bad part of Mitchell Moses' game. I think it's just his competitiveness. He gets in these moods where he's just like, I need to find points. I need to find points. Um, but the, on the flip side of that, when you look at Mitchell Moses, when they needed those like tries in the last 10 minutes, he went into that mode, and it all worked for him. Mm. Um, but yeah, back to, back to the Manly Seagulls. Schuster for me is just again, it's as long as he can get his head right, and his head seems to be right. As long as he can train hard and stay on the field, he will be playing in Origin. And the beauty of Schuster is as well, like because he's playing with such a ball dominant um, seven, he can just focus on his little things. Yeah, he doesn't have to be the main voice. He doesn't have to organise. He can just focus on his little things and getting them right. It'll be interesting to see, like, what's well, Chaz probably got? We reckon three years left. Yeah, I mean, you don't know these days, eh? Because they're bloody playing till they're a thousand. That's fair, but like, I think whatever. Like, I don't think it could be more than five years, for example. Oh yeah, and for sure. For by sure. that point, you would be hoping that Josh Schuster would really be starting to come into his own. Then, like, it could all time really well for Manly. It's interesting. Would you put him in a seven? Like, make? I oh, know I wouldn't. Like, you still have to go out and find a seven. But I think that there would then be sevens in five years' time. That if if he reaches his potential, they'd be going fuck. I'll take unders to play with Schuster. Yeah, yeah, and also like they w- won't need to go find someone to get points because he'll be able to get the points. He'll be able to. It's more just like a Townsend, a and, Renault. And you'll be going to the market going, who wants to play with Schuster and Trevojevic? Yeah. People Olikowatu as well. Yeah. How old is Olikowatu? 23? He's how far old. off How far off do you reckon Schuster? I reckon he's two seasons off uh, Origin. He's two consistent seasons off Origin. Yeah, that's, sorry, that's yeah. what I meant. Like two, yeah. two full seasons, I think he gets a bench spot. Olikowatu is 24. 24. Yeah. So young. I think if Schuster plays it, 80% of his best for the next two years. He's right in that conversation for sure. What do you reckon, Timmy? I think, yeah, potentially next season, just because of his versatility on the bench. Like, don't have to, have to talk about him as a starter, but his utility value on the bench, why not next season? Like, you could literally chuck him in the front row. Mm. Like, that's how big he is. Because he's, what, 100 and, I think he's 105 to 110 kilos? Like, 106, it says here. 106 kilos. The, the, the one thing is, it's like versatility isn't a thing the Blues are lacking, but you can also never have a, enough of it and enough utility value in your ven- bench. But gun 5'8", gun second rower, and can absolutely be a ball-playing lock. Not that the Blues need it, but, you know, yeah. say we've got we'll Murray goes out and then one of them gets injured. Yeah. Just another ball-playing lock just locks straight in, so he's perfect. Yeah. So you just got to, again, it's, for Schuster, it's not about talent. It's not about being able to deliver it. It's just about keep training hard, mm. keep his mind right. He can literally do whatever he wants to do. I think he grabbed his calf at one point throughout this game. Have we heard anything more about that? I think it was just a cramp. Just usually cramp, when they're stretching it? like that, it's a cramp. You're not, when you tear your calf, you're not usually stretching it like that. But NRL physio, the great NRL physio, make sure to give him a follow, guys. Gives all the updates on uh, injuries over the weekend, and it's really good insight. Like It's immediate, and also he basically tells you how long your player's going to be out for, and he's like pretty much accurate all the time. Incredibly accurate. Incredibly yeah. accurate. Um, even when sometimes the other mail comes out that, you know, oh, no, that's not the case, NRL physio is usually right. So give him a follow. Um, but he said the only thing is sometimes a cramp can re-aggravate an old calf strain. Oh, really? Yeah. Jesus. Um, but he said, uh, uh, like, the implication I got from the post was that's a small possibility, but it is a possibility. Uh, I think he'll be fine. Again, hopefully... Just needs to work on his match fitness. You know, you don't want to be doing that every single week, you know, cramping and rah-rah. Uh, but, yeah, Schuster was incredible. Uh, and I know it's early days for him, but I think he's proven by now. He's crazy year at back row. 
Now he started the year off really well at six. It's all it's all up to him. His future is in his hands, in no one else's hands. Mm. Um, Fullback like, went all right too. Yeah, Tommy Turbo. Breaks, I feel like he's in first gear still. It's terrifying. I know. It's incredible. But let's talk about Olakawatu. Mm. Holy. He was phenomenal. What about his hit on uh, Wurumu, Greg? Him and Aloyo. <laughs> like, what? Like, they're not shot in, you know, little halves and that. They're, sh- they're going after the big boys. Who was it? Yeah, last week, it was kick out. It's like, when I see back rowers doing that, like, there's... There's some players that will just, you know, they'll go for shots and it, it might happen to be a centre or a, a seven, a six or whatever. When I see an, a wide running forward hunting the biggest blokes on the field, there's not many players right now in the NRL that do that, that go hunting the biggest players. I was uh, I was watching this game live up in Rockhampton then I had to go pick these two up from the airport. So I, I missed about half an hour of it or so. And I got to the end of the game and I had a look at the stats and I thought, oh, look, I 15 tackles, that's low for him. And I watched it back the next day. They were running away from him. Yeah, you wouldn't <laughs> want to they run. They weren't going near him. No, nah, he was phenomenal. He was phenomenal. I really... What do you guys think of all the game? Yeah, really good. I obviously scored those tries um, in the back end. That was very, very handy there. Uh, but still, you know, 10 runs, 130 metres. Uh, I actually thought outside of the tries, it felt like it was a slightly quieter game mm. than usual from him. But this is just what you come to expect of this guy. And, you know, as just, you know the, the two tries, he's just got X factor that you can't coach can't and he's just he's coming into his own he seems so confident impacting every game he's played this year it's just yeah. hate scoring a try off a kick oh hates it you talk about nat i doing it geez big ola scores a try off a kick loves it that's Absolutely. effort areas isn't it just pushing through all the time just giving you giving you six or your seven some options mm-hmm. like so often we see some out uh, wide running forwards where they go oh well my job is to tackle heaps and run lines mm-hmm. and they just kind of Put their hands up when it comes to attack. Whereas Olakawatu is constantly like, whatever, how I can impact this game? What can I do to, in attack, in defence? Um, I thought he was good. I also think um, Tuolangi has been really good as well. Um, you know, statistically, you, you don't notice it because he's not putting up crazy stats. But I think he just adds this extra punch on the other side where you don't have to just only worry about Olakawatu. You've got to worry about him as well. There's uh, little things that he does, though, that catch your eye. Yep, for sure. He's just got really nice little touches yeah. throughout the game. I, I think he's going to. I think he's been a already proven to be a solid buy. I mean, yep. you know, uh, like, I feel like they're the punching bag, but wouldn't you be stoked to be him at Manly, winning rugby league? You know, Tigers at the moment struggling. Just yeah. Uh, Paseca, I thought he was really good at this, especially opening the match, um, like as in the, the beginning of the match. Uh, who else stood out for you boys? Uh, we'll talk about Tommy. Two tries, a try assist, 204 metres, 10 tackle breaks, a line break, a line break assist, an offload. Like, and as you said, Guru, I think the bloke's not even in. He's not even at 100%. Oh, mate, he's nowhere near 100%. I, I'd say he's at about 70 at the moment. I, We've never I, seen anything like it. Yeah, I think it's fair. He is he's like nothing we've ever seen before. And even like like you talk about other guys that you put in this category, you know, your Haynes, your Barbers, these sort of guys, like we talk about them when they're at their best. He is nowhere near his best right now. And like, yeah, yes, Parramatta, they haven't started the season incredibly well. They're the grand finalist. Yeah, like, and, and also Tommy's done it against anyone. He's done it against the, the only yeah. team I don't think he has torn apart is the Storm. That's it. Every other team is better player origin this year. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> be interesting, interesting to see if uh, he'll get picked this year in Origin. I don't know if he's made it, mate. Just <laughs> being honest, I think he's got to earn his spot back. Up in Queensland, we'd make him earn his jersey. That's the problem with New South Wales. Don't make him earn the jersey, mate. Oh, what about him and Giraldi? I don't know if we'll pick that guy. We'll see. We'll see. I know. And I also loved it in that live show at Rocky. We were chatting Origin. We were chatting centres. And they're like, oh, you know, Gagai has been battling a little bit at times. Just saying, we throw a hammer in at centre and a few others. Oh, Me and Guru God. made just sitting there going, Latrell and Tommy Turbo on these blokes. <laughs> Absolute porkies. We said we'd definitely give Gagai. We're loyal. We said give him game one for sure. Um, Anyway, it's all right. Underestimate us at your peril. <laughs> at your peril. Uh, yeah, what do you think about Tommy, uh, Timmy? Uh, yeah, free. And the, the other one I wanted to touch on, probably not his best game statistically speaking as such, but Ruben Garrick is just becoming such an elite winger of the NRL. He just doesn't make a mistake. He can slot in at fullback seamlessly when required, which it mainly can be quite often. Finishes just about every time. Mm. Gun goal kicker. Meter eater, not his biggest meter yardage in this game, but he's running for you know two hundred plus meters most weeks. 
it's a shame, origin wise, that we're so stacked for wingers. But man, Ruben Gark is becoming just one of the best wingers in the NRL. I think he's so consistent. So he'd, consistent. Like with when it comes to consistent wingers, like he'd have to be in in the top five for sure. Surely, yeah. like he's so consistent. I can't. I'm trying to remember the last bad game he had. I think it was like last year, and his knee was completely fucked. Mm. He shouldn't have been playing, but they had no players. Outside of that, like I can't remember the last time Garrick. We watched a game, and at the end of the game, we're sitting there going, "Man, Garrick was pretty bang average today." He is, and he's a battler. And if anything, when he moves to fullback, he gets more consistent. Mm. And there's, you know, there's so there's several players ahead of him that will be picked on the wing for the Blues, but he could slot in there seamlessly, I think, and be so reliable for Freddie and the Blues. I, I, I'd <coughs> love to see him get a crack one day, but I can easily see it being. Uh, a bit of a case of Jared Croker, who could have played <coughs> Origin his whole career, but was just off it. Mm. Um, Garrett could be in the same sort of mould, but I tell you, he wouldn't look out of place. Yeah, Manly, another good win. Jake Trevojevic, I thought he was fantastic again. I think that Jake Trevojevic is starting to kind of find his, his spot in the team. I think he's pretty much transitioned fully away from the ball-playing yep. lock that he was maybe four or five years ago. For young fellas or, or girls that watch the game now, or even newcomers to the game, they'll only see Jake as like a tackle machine, a front rower that just gets through a bunch of good, solid work. But, you know, four or five years ago, he was the best ball-playing lock in the comp. Yeah. Like, literally. Uh, but I think... And so, I think there was a couple of years there where he was hovering between not really, is he still that guy or is he the guy that needs to get through the hard yards? I think he's he's kind of fully stepped into the role of, okay, I'm the... I'm the you can still ball play at times. Yeah. But he stepped in the role like, okay, I get through the grunt work for my team. Well, I sort of felt like before Jess Hasler arrived, this is sort of who he was. And mm. then Hasler changed his game a little bit to be that ball player. But he went, I felt like anyway, he went too far down the route of a link man. Mm. And they weren't utilising the skill set that he has. So I think he's in a real sweet spot at the moment, mm. Jakey. It's a good mm. point you make, girl. It's like there's a difference between a ball player and being a link man, isn't it? Mm. I mean, they, yeah. they obviously tie in together. But a link man is play in the middle, give good service as the middle man between your two halves. Mm. But, you know, when we talk about ball player, we've seen him put Tommy Turbo in particular through gaps his entire career, particularly in the early days, and that's his ball playing ability, isn't it? Yeah, and he's mm. so good at picking his moments too. Oh, that's the thing that's undervalued about him. Remember, we were in like, what, four years ago? And, uh, like, he was, his ball playing was, like, phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal for the big fella. Uh, but, yeah, you're right. I think he has found this perfect sweet spot now where he knows how he can contribute to a side. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, for so long we've been speaking about you need a ball-playing lock, you need a ball-playing lock. Manly don't really have – they don't really play like that. I think maybe it's because Ches maybe is so dominant and also obviously got Tommy um, through the middle there that picks up a lot of slack, I guess. And, um, and you go – you look at Gerbo and say, job one, first and foremost, truck it up, take the hard carry, yep. as opposed to the last couple of years where it's been said, pass the ball, you're a link man. Mm. But when you truck it up, mate – Take your boy, take Tommy Turbo on your inside shoulder and just hold it up, hold it up, because yep. there'll be a lot of tries come off the back of it. Uh, I think Sean Kepi's been pretty good the last couple of weeks too for yep. him. Um, he gets on and just gets through a mountain of work. Uh, now, onto the Eels. Ooh. Um, it's getting concerning. Very concerning, because um, who do they play this week? They've got Penrith this week into the Roosters. And they're both coming off buys. Yeah. They, um, Easter Monday, they play the Tigers. I reckon there's a good chance you have two 0-5 oh teams going head-to-head -head there. Wow. Yeah, let's talk about the Eels. Like, it's, again, it's this defence for them, like, leaking so many points. Like, where, I just want to know, like, what has changed? They used to be, last year, like, not that long ago, they were so aggressive and good in defence, like, if anything, there were periods in their game where they couldn't put points on. Remember when they went, I think it, was, it wasn't last year, but the year before, where they just like couldn't find points. And we were sitting here going, they need to find a strike centre because they struggle. They need a strike player out in their outside backs because they're just struggling to find points. Now, they can find points, you know, whenever they want, pretty much. But it's the leaking of points that's um, it's really, really concerning. Uh, I'm, I, I'm a bit concerned for the Eels. I really am. And yeah. I, like I know last year it was like back them to the death, rah rah. But that's because I'd seen them early in the year beat some of the top mm. tier sides. I'm yeah, and I mean this is three weeks in a row of four point losses, which 
you know, they're in the contest, but I think this competition is going to be so close this year that giving away a start like this to other teams, I reckon it's going to be tough to rein back in. Mm -hmm. I really do. And, um, I mean, when I have a look at this Parramatta side, the spots that I was a little bit worried about, the edges, I think Cartwright's done really well. Dory obviously got injured on the weekend, but I thought he was doing well. Hodgson was another worry for me. He's done unreal. Like, a lot of the problems they had, I think they have solved them pretty well on the field. Mm. Still just not getting the results. Well, and like, yeah, okay, they've got players to come back, for sure. But we don't excuse the storm when we go, oh, you know, they've got all these players to come back. It's like, they're supposed to be a powerhouse now. They're not, they're, they're not the Eels from five years ago. They're the Eels that have been top four, essentially, for the last four or five years. They were in a grand final last year. Yes, they lost two edge back rowers, but they should come in and, like, they should at least have one win over the first three games. Now, I'm not saying the whole year is over for the Eels, but I do think it's concerning. I do think it's concerning. Timmy, what do you reckon? Yeah, and you you see blokes like Jermaine Hopgood just throwing these willy-nilly offloads (laughs) late in the game and... Game on the line and, and essentially cost him Paramount a victory. Guru, who's sat here for two years saying he's God's gift to the NRL, and he goes and throws that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you came off the back fence, didn't you? Uh, oh, yeah. Jaman. <laughs> he's giggling to himself on the way in the car. Um, yeah, that was a tough pill to swallow. God, I copped it. Yeah. Far out. So, it's yeah. a guy throwing an offload when you're behind on the scoreboard. Oh, no. And, and, fuck it, me. and the, the, the mess just came through about, oh, you know, he said he never throws a bad offload. They were down by, was it four or six at the time? A couple of minutes on the clock, chasing the game. It was like, he's, it was nothing. In it. But also it's like, oh, okay, are we going to forget the 80 minutes, the 80 minutes and the yeah. 80 minutes that he was fucking phenomenal? We're going to forget <laughs> that. We'll just look at one offload. The answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on the internet, yeah, for sure. There's so many people that were sitting there going, yes, I can give it to Guru for being wrong about <laughs> Hopgood. Um, yeah, like, uh, look. Hope he doesn't do it in origin anyway. <laughs> well, actually, you would you would hope he does do it in Origin. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, if he's there, that'll be a big enough win for me. But anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, so to the Eels, uh, yeah, I'm just... Uh, look, I do think that they'll... They will bounce back, and I think they'll bounce back oh, against the Panthers, Panthers uh, this week. But they've got, you know, bringing Lane back, bringing Madison back. So I'm not sitting here saying that they're not going to make the eight or whatever, but it is starting. I'm starting to get a bit concerned. They drop too many too early. And then, like, what happens if they get a couple injuries when the boys get back? And it's just the points. So what was it last week? 30-plus points last week. 34 yeah. points this week. You know, we looked at the Storm. The Storm have gone back-to-back losses. So that first game, even more so, the Eels should have beat them. And the Storm did everything they could possibly do in the last 15 minutes to lose that game. Yeah, so no you can't. just weren't able to ice it. It's, um, I mean, look, some, I guess some positive is I thought Dylan Brown was outstanding. Um, 167 metres run, 23 runs, uh, 23 tackles, zero misses. Like, you know, I think that's a, an incredible knock. It's interesting because, like, you look at their halves and Mitchell Moses, I don't think he's playing poorly at all. Like, I think he's playing decent footy. Now, sometimes the problem with Moses is it's like he fades in and out of game sometimes. And, like, when you need him to, like, just take the game by the reins, sometimes he just, I don't know, like maybe the game plan is to get to certain spots and he's sticking to the structure too much or maybe he's not sticking to the structure enough. But it's just the fact that, like, I'd, I'd consider Mitch Moses a top tier half now. And I just think that, Maybe even Moses of last year probably ices at least one of these games. So, but then you look at it, your stats, he's got the tri-assists, he's got the tries, he's got the line breaks. But when you're the main guy and, you know, you're going to be on the biggest contract, unfortunately, the, the result starts and ends with you. Yeah, the halfback. You're the, and like, which sucks and it's unfair sometimes when you're playing mad, but yeah. he's the guy. He's the guy. He got him to a grand final. Yeah. You know, so when he, gets, when he gets him to a grand final, you give him the raps – but when they go 0-3, you got to go, well, you know, unfortunately, something, something has to improve. Yep, and that's the halfback job at the end of the day. Um, yeah, and as you said, you know, got him to a grand final. Even if it wasn't his performances that got him there as a halfback, he'd still get the applaudance for it. Mm. Same's got to go the other way. Can I ask you a question? Ryan Madison, we've been having this argument mm. for two weeks. If he comes back this week, do you – and the injury to Matt Dory might f- f- force the hand to be fair now, but would you have brought him back on an edge or through the middle? On an edge, on an edge. Yeah? Yeah. Well, they're just scoring so many points against them. Like, and I'm not saying it's the edge's faults, but like, 
He's definitely not going 13. Jaman's got that spot. I, I can see him coming off the bench and playing through the middle. I really oh, can. Fuck. Do you reckon they can afford that right now? They're oh, on he three. Plays 80 on the edge. Yeah, I reckon he's on the field as long as possible. Yeah. I just don't think they got the stock to afford that anymore. Whereas like last year, they had Papali'i. They had um, Lane on one edge. I just don't know if they can afford it. I just don't know how much longer they can keep playing their two starting front rowers for 60 minutes straight. And that's it's you, outrageous. Yeah, you, you need, obviously, the punch off the bench and, and coming through and then boys go off. But they're obviously playing big minutes. But how does a forward pack look of Campbell Gillard, Gillard and Boyle up front, Lane and Maddo on the edges, Hopgood at lock, mm. Hodjo at nine. I know there's boys who need to come on after that, but they're all big minute players. That's like close to the best pack in the comp. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I reckon you put him on edge. Hopgood, you've got to keep it 13, even though it was probably one of his more quieter games uh, on the weekend. Um, as in not quiet, but, you know, the, I think his two games before that, he mm. was outstanding. Uh, this this playing Junior Paolo for 66 minutes, what I, I don't get it. Like, even if... What, what I'm not understanding is, is, like, even if you've got no backup or whatever or you don't trust them... Surely you look at it and you go, well, it's a long season because if I gas Paolo, Paolo and RCG out now, there's no way I'm going to make a finals push. He played the most games of any player last year. I don't understand it. He's got to play Origin in eight weeks' time and they're pushing him through for these sort of minutes. It's outrageous. And even, I, and even if, if um, the big fella, Junior, like he probably wants to stay out there, but it's the coaching staff, in my opinion,'s job to protect the players from themselves. Every player would want to stay out there forever. They're all too tough for their own good. You've got to make the best decisions for them. 66 minutes for a big bopper like Paul. Like, are we forgetting how, like, (coughs) Junior Polo is considered a big bopper. You know, like, if he was playing 40 minutes, you'd go, yeah, I can see that. Now, you know, it's a credit to him because he's, you know, one of a kind, unique big bopper that can play these big minutes. But this early in the year, 66 minutes, what's what's his minutes been each game? He went 68, 57, 66. Fuck. How much of a lack of faith does that show in the forwards coming off the bench? Like, we have to play you big minutes every week. Momosia, Murchie, Greg, Makatoa had 18 minutes, 34, 14 and 27, which was more than previous weeks. Matt Dury obviously left the field early, so there would have been extra minutes there probably to to Momosia. But what's it say about your bench? This is what says to me that I would play Matto through the middle. Because you look at last year... all their games, as soon as that 20 minute mark hits and he puts Matto on, like there was times there where as soon as there was a sim meeting or something, he would put Matto straight in the middle, mm. straight away. He relies on him through the middle. He can't keep on doing what he's doing. It seems evident to me he doesn't trust any of those guys that are on the bench. You know, the more you talk about it, the more you're convincing me, Guru. Could you, after 20 minutes, when say Bolo or Campbell Gillard goes off 25 minutes, could you then shift him to the middle there and bring an edge on? Well, you've got Jack Murchie. Play him on the edge. And Dury's been all right. Is Dury injured? Yeah, yeah I yeah. think it was a PCL on the weekend. Fuck me. They yeah. are in absolute Barney rubble. Um, yeah, the more you talk about it, like, I'm trying to think, yeah, you need Madison on the field as much as possible, but what's more important, your two front rowers getting a fucking spell or, you know, Madison being on an edge? Maybe it is more important to go, okay, Junior, you don't have to pay 66 minutes this week. You can you don't have you yeah. play 55 or 50. And I agree with both of you. I think Maddo's a mad edge player. I love him. There. I think it's his better spot, but I think in this team, they need him more in the middle. It's it's just uh, it's surprising because, like, I feel like they haven't really future-proofed themselves very well. They haven't prepared for being rated. And, look, that's easy for me to sit here and say. They've come all the way from Spoon up to top four. But when you look at, like, the current situation they're in, they, lo- they lose two back rowers and they're not shot, but it's a big issue for the club. You know what I mean? They, they, they don't trust their front rowers that are coming in to replace them. And they've got the absolute best out of Bryce Cartwright so far, I think. Like, imagine if they didn't, which mm. I probably didn't think they would. Yeah. Like, there's been a lot of things that have gone their way as well that they've made work, and there's still a lot of issues there. Like, yeah. I think, the, like, Makatoa played 27 minutes on the weekend. It's the most minutes he's played. I thought he was great last year. He was great. He was impact. He was he almost was like a um, a villi. But it's like Rabbitohs. he's gone off him completely. Yeah, it's tough. I just don't. I don't see a world where you can be playing Regan, Campbell, Gillard, and Junior Polo that many minutes this early on in the season. They don't need that many minutes, and it's not going like they're human. They'll eventually they'll fatigue. 
Um, Junior's a front row forward who's like he's played two hundred games now. Oh man, his body has been through a lot. He's so going to be a rep much. footballer for the rest of his career. He's going to play more footy than most. He like led Samoa to a grand final, and he's playing him for sixty minutes essentially when it's summer. Like what? What is oh. going on? Uh, another thing as well, I I want to know what their outside back depth is like because Wonga Blake and Bailey Simonson, unfortunately, just pretty good. They're, 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 like they, oh, that's in, oh, I thought you were saying they played pretty yeah, good. Yeah, no, no. Like, their they're depth, they, they've got it there. Because they've got Sinny. Zach Sinny was really good yep. in the preseason. Unfortunately, they lost Sean Russell. Yep. Um, Hayes Dunstar can sort of slot in there as well. Assey's uh, available now too. Assey. So they've got options. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts about um, Blake and Simonson? I've always had issues with Blake, to be honest with you. I've always said I think Blake's a better athlete than he is a footballer um, and I if, if I was playing Parramatta he'd be a spot that I would target most weeks Timmy he very similar to Guru I think yeah so I'm, much I'm, potential I'm not convinced so much potential but I've been saying that for so many years haven't we oh for sure sure I love Wonga Blake I love the way he plays in regards to when he's on he's so exciting mm. to watch so athletic but just too many errors and missed tackles and you know last week Bailey Simonson I think he dropped like how many balls did he drop? Three? Yeah, fair whack. Yeah. And Bailey Simonson is another one. When he's on, he gets through a bunch of work, heaps of tackle breaks. But unfortunately, the you know, unfortunately these boys this year just haven't been at their best. So that's why I wonder what is their depth like? Because it may do them well to sit and, you know, to go to reserve grade, get their confidence back, and then come back into first grade. And I know it's it's hard to hear that as a player. You know, I fucking heard it. I was in reserve grade a lot, so I heard it all the time. But sometimes it really is best to just go back, enjoy footy. The pressure's not on you as much. Just get back to loving footy and confidence in the way you play. Because Wonga Blake and Bailey Simonson, we'd all agree, they're first graders, correct? Yep. Like, yeah, for they're sure. They're first graders, yep. for sure. But it's just about making sure that they're confident in what they're doing. And I think at the moment, they're just struggling for that self-confidence. Uh, Assi played his first game back on the weekend, I believe, at centre. Scored a try, as did Zaxini, as did Hayes Dunstan, to be fair. So, a few options there. Do you think that they'll probably make some changes there this week? I don't think so. Wow. But I don't think they're far off. What do you reckon, another week or two? Going up against Penrith, tough gig to bring in. Yeah, young fellas. Sini, Assey, Dunster. Tell you what, Bailey Simonson's going to be doing catch and practice all week because Ooh, yep. Nathan Cleary is going to be <laughs> fucking... Um, well, it was, like, was it the grand final or the um, semi-final where Nath just peppered? Yeah. Semi. Sammy was one of Blake. Fuck, he'll yeah. be stoked he's playing centre. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. Thank God. And that, that's the Lord Jewish. I, I remember talking to um, Roger Fabre a couple of years. I don't know if I ever mentioned it, but I, said, I, I asked him one day, "Who's the fastest?" And I rattled off, "You yeah, add car these guys." And he straight away went, "The fastest guy I've ever coached." I think this was before Jason Saar, to be fair. He said was Wonga Blake. He said that he naturally has the best technique of anyone he's seen before. Yeah. Which is unbelievable. Yeah. So. Hopefully they can bounce back. Um, if not, like, let's say they continue to struggle for confidence or, or whatever. You know, maybe a game or two or three or four in reserve grade, get the confidence back and then be all the, you know, the players we know they can be. If they come out of Penrith and Roosters 0-5, mm. can they make finals? Well, with Cowboys and Sharks starting the year so poorly, all of a sudden there's some spots in that top. You know, Raiders, although they got the win, have started relatively poorly as well. You know, some spots have opened up in that. Like, really only Broncos are the the team outside the eight that have shot into, you know, top four contention. On top of that, you know, I still have the Storm in my eight, but there's a... It's but, looking tough. But I also think spots have opened up because so many teams have improved. So many better teams. Like, I, I, reckon, I reckon it's going to be very, very hard to make <coughs> finals this year if you start 0-5. It's going to be one hell... Like, who, who, they've got Matter to come back in Sean Lane. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Like, and, and two quality players, don't get me wrong. But it's a lot to chase, especially once you hit, hit the Origin Series and your two front row forwards that are playing 60 minutes aren't going to be there for six weeks. How good is the NRL so far this year? Six of the top eight didn't play finals last year. I know it's very early on, but mm. there's a small sample size. Six of the eight didn't play finals last season. The top four didn't play finals last season. It is so wide open. Oh, it's so good, so good. Oh, man, if they go on five, look. They can, they can still make the eight, but geez, it's going to be tough. tough. Like, yeah. oh my God, chasing, what are you chasing, 10 points? 
Of, oh, yeah, 10 points. Yeah. I mean, considering their, their defence at the moment, which teams would you be confident in saying Parramatta beat next weekend in this comp at the yeah, moment? Yeah, well, none, really. Oh, like, Tigers? Outside of that, I don't, there's no one else. The Tigers would like, probably get up from because it's probably, the Battle of the West. Yeah. Kind of thing. <laughs> but like other, like there, there are no teams that I'm confident in saying Parramatta would beat. Yeah, mate, it's it's a tough start for the Eels. You would have thought they could have dragged one. I think, like, if they open the season and went two from three, I think that's a massive win. Take that, run with it. If they go one and four, I think that's a win, honestly. But right now, now, yeah, spot there in and out. They need, they just got to get jag one win somehow, yeah. some way. Otherwise, geez, it's going to be tough. Um, hopefully, they bounce back though. It was really cool to be on that ride last year. Really, really cool. 